Okay, I am going to, well, let me say a couple words first. Um, I know, as, as does everybody, that um, we now have chat GPT and that there's a lot of uproar about, gee, you can do this and Siri's not very good and people are writing articles saying Siri's terrible, Apple's behind, blah, blah, blah. Um, my approach, especially tonight, is pretty practical. It's like, okay, I understand that there's all this stuff that's coming, but there's a lot that you can do on your phone right now that a lot of people don't know about. And that's what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing mainly on the phone, but I am going to um, talk about some other possibilities as well. I'll start with a couple of things. Um, and so, some of this is simply my practices and it, everything won't fit for you. So you will need to adjust for you. But with the iPhone in particular, I almost never say, hey, do it. Instead, what I'll say is, what I'll do is simply press the button. Now that assumes, and that's by the button in my case, and I don't have a way, you see the Apple, um, let me see, let me go here for a second. You see where I have the Apple um, stock price underneath my, the time that's 734. Right to the right of that, there is a button on the side of the phone. It's so your volume buttons are on the left on my phone, and I do have a 14. But the one of these buttons, if you press it, Siri will come up, you know, and, and then you can simply say whatever it is you want to say to her. So I always press the button. Now, on an iPad, again, um, again, depending on what model you have, I can press the button on the top and get Siri activated. If it's hands free, if you're, you know, making bread in the kitchen and you've got your iPad there and you want to ask her ask a question, then you can use the hey do it uh, thing. Um, if you have lots of Apple gear, which around this house we have lots of Apple gear, and we say hey do it, we will get sometimes an answer from one HomePod uh, down in the living room and one HomePod in the other room and maybe an iPhone or two. So that's another reason if you've got lots of Apple gear, it's sometimes much more efficient to just press the button. Personally, I have my iPhone in my hand a lot of the time, or at least close by it, and to grab it and press the button, it's a lot quicker. So, Is um, there a way to set up a default of which device responds? It's supposed there... to know from, who, from which direction you're speaking, which one you're talking to, but the that feature seems to have broken down a bit, at least recently. And, and I mean, it's, a lot's going to depend on your environment. In our house, we have kind of a tall uh, ceiling in the, in the living room. And then we also, behind where I'm sitting right now, is our family room. And we've got two home pods in there. And then we've got one down in the living room. So if I just shout out, hey, what's it? And I'm, st I'm sitting in front of my Mac, there's, a, there's just... I, I, I'm not surprised that this, that anything would know what I was talking to exactly. So it, it, it depends on how many devices you have and so on. So it's just, it's simpler uh, for me, certainly, and maybe for many others. Just press the button. It's faster. So on the Mac, now, if you're using the Mac, there's a keyboard shortcut in your, you just go to system prefs or what's now called settings instead of system prefs or system something system else, settings. system settings. Um, there's a Siri panel on that Siri panel there. It will show you what your, um, what your keyboard shortcut is. Mine is simply control control. And I don't believe I ever set, set it up that way. I think so that may be the default, but I'm also one operating system behind. So, <clears throat> so there's that. Also, dictation, I'm going to recommend that people use dictation. I'm not going to do a lot with that tonight in terms of what I show you, but um, although I can later on if we have extra time, but the way to do that is, is to just op, uh, activate the dict dictation, whether you're in notes or whatever app you happen to be in, and then pause, turn it off so you can gather your thoughts and go, wait a minute, is that what I want to say? And I personally find it still faster to just dictate, even if I'm, especially if I'm doing a note that nobody's going to see, but me, it's not like I'm writing a formal essay or anything for something like that. Just, blah, 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 you know, get out the words and then go back and go, huh, well, that's not exactly how I want to say it and maybe do some wordsmithing. So those are all, all um, things, by the way, as far as this presentation is concerned, I'm going to do 
uh, demo after demo after demo in effect. But I do have a keynote that has um, references and has a lot of this listed down as to what you can do. And we'll find a way with Robert. We'll work with Robert and either get it up on the site or get it, uh, perhaps make it part of the YouTube presentation or or whatever. We'll figure out exactly how to do that. So you will have access to the information that way. Linda, so, may yeah. I offer a tip about pressing the button? Sure. I used to teach this a lot and people who aren't used to using Siri tend to um, speak slowly. Ah. Siri thinks they're done and will try to start helping. So I told them to pretend that you're, whatever button you're pressing, that you're keeping your finger on her lips. And you can take as long as you want to phrase your question. And as soon as you lift your finger off the button, she's now free to speak. That solved oh. a lot of problems. Right. Okay, cool. There's a tip. There's a tip already. All right. So what I will do is, uh, I'm, so I'm just going to do a couple of demos here. Read the last message that I got from Robert Brown. You have recent messages from Robert Brown. Robert Brown sent a link to YouTube, how to use visual lookup on your iPhone, Apple support. Would you like to reply? No, not now. Okay. All right. So other things you can do, you can make a call, send a message or play a voicemail. Uh, make a call. I'm, I'm not going to do that now, but I would say something I like it because I'm not pressing the button right now. I would just pick up the, pick up the phone, press the button and say, call Charles. Yeah, or whomever else. The people that you are calling do have to be in your contact list. And if I said, call Charles, I probably have three or four people. So Siri might come back and say, which one? So just for information. Um, let's see. Um, send a message to Charles Goucher. Seems like you usually message Hagen with messages, so I'll use that one. What do you want to say? Hey, sweetie, I'm having a lot of fun here at the meeting. Glad you're here with me. Send it? Yes. Done. Okay, there you go. So, and just an example of sending a message. All right. So another thing now that um, I do all the time, I don't know how many times a day, I will send a reminder. So, and you can, and some of these reminders can be more complicated than you think. Um Remind me tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. to water the aloe plant in the back room. Okay, I added it. Okay, now you can also flag a reminder. To do that, you need to say, send a, or, or um, make a flag reminder. Um, let's see, make a flagged reminder. Actually, scratch that. Make a flagged note about the plants out on the front porch. Done. All right. So um, another one. Remind me to pay the electric bill on the 10th of every month. Okay. I added it. Okay. And then if you want to be, here's another one that I have. Remind me every Tuesday for the next four weeks at 4 p.m. that I have a call with Vicki at 7. Okay, I added it. Okay, now the reason that I did that is because I'm adding more and more complexity here. The remind me that I, I tend to use reminders as a um, something that pops into my head. I want to remember it and I want to get it down right away. Personally, I use Things as a more organizational app, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but that gives you just an idea of some of the reminders. Reminders are just a piece of cake. One of the easiest things to use, and also one that you can add much more complexity to than you might think. Um, let's what see. What is All a right. flag reminder? Is that like an urgent flag? Yes, it's just like a flag. I mean, you... It, with flags in email or flags in, uh, I'm going to say Apple mail or notes or anything, it just puts a little flag <laughs> up next to the reminder. So if I was to look at the, let's see, let's just go there. Well, let's go to, let's go to lists. 
Um, a bunch of them are going to be all oh, that. See, I've got, I have mine set up. I'm not going to go a whole lot into this, but, but you'll notice though, if you go to back into reminders, there's an entire flagged section there. All right, let me go back. Uh, do -do -R -E. Reminders. Where is it? An, back the, one from the list. Go back. Flagged. Okay, flagged. There you go. So it says zero though, and I did tell her to do a flagged one, but that was, this is reminders. What I did was flagged notes. So that's another thing. But if you have some, if you, I have a gazillion things in reminders. I have um, a Trader Joe's shopping list. I have a Safeway trade uh, shopping list. I have a Whole Foods tra uh, shopping list. So I have a whole lot of different categories, like kinds of lists. If I wanted to flag something that I wanted to make sure that I could get to really quickly, so just to be a little bit more organized in my disorganization, that's why I might use a flag. I do that a lot in, in uh, Apple's mail as well. So because I have a lot of stuff in there and I want it to stand out. So it's just a matter of, it's up to you how you want to use it. You could decide I'm going to make uh, purple flags uh, <laughs> when I communicate with my good buddy, John Doe, or my best girlfriend, Jane Doe, or whatever. I mean, you, you, so you could set it up any number of ways. Um, more, more things that Siri can do. Let's get out of reminders for a moment. Reminders is just a, a piece of cake, but bear in mind that you can do a lot more in terms of complexity. Actually, let me do one more quick one is just, um, add tomatoes to my Trader Joe's list. Okay. I added it. So that helps me, you know, I'm cooking something or making a salad or whatever. And I go, oh, I'm going to need the next time I go to Trader Joe's, the next time I go to Whole Foods, I'm going to need X. Then put it in there right away. It's there. Then I, then when I get to the store, I open up reminders and look at what all I've got on my list. I also tend to make a list, you know, like double check my list before I leave the house. But that way it's there, you know, when I get there. You can do it another way. You can say, if you go to the same Trader Joe's all the time or the you know, pick your store. You can say, remind me when I get to Trader Joe's that I need tomatoes. That's another way to do it. Um, it just doesn't happen to be my personal preference, but, you know, whatever works for you. Um, finding Apple devices, including AirTags. Um, let's see. Let's, let's, do, let's do this one. Um, find my iPad. Looking for your iPad. This nearby. Pinging your iPad now. There is an iPad, and it will make noise until you turn it off. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm here. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have an air tag in my car. I have an air tag on my keys. I have an air tag. We have an air tag in some of our luggage. Um, it's been kind of a joke among some of the uh, members of the committee, those of us that get together to plan these meetings, that one air tag fell out of our luggage when we were on a cruise ship. And we watched it traipse all around the world for a while. It ended up in the Philippines. Um, you know, you could look at it on the phone. I didn't ping it. I mean, I guess I could have, but it would have driven somebody nuts. <laughs> I don't know how that would have would have transpired. But um, so th that works. Oh, you want me to you want me to do another demo? Sure. All right. Um, find my keys. Looking for Linda's keys. It's nearby. Ping in Linda's keys now. Oh, you can't. Oh, yes, you can see that, you right? You can hear that, too. They can hear it. Okay. All right. Make it stop. <laughs> <laughs> so you should put those back where they belong so I can find them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know um, where, to, where to go for that. Charles knows where to go for that. Okay. Um, opening apps. Everybody knows that you can do this. Um, open notes. Okay. Um, Open Overcast. Okay. So what I didn't know or what never occurred to me until I, until I started playing around with, with prep for this, and you can is that you can also say, 
Turn on the flashlight. It's on now. All right. Now I am going to turn it back off. That's the flashlight I use all the time because I'm reluctant to put on my reader glasses. And sometimes if I just shine a little light on it, I can see it. But sometimes going to the front page with the little uh, flashlight down in the lower left-hand corner here, sometimes that's a little bit more difficult. It requires two hands. This is easier. Just turn it on. It works. Um, what's the latest news? Here's some news. Now, mind you, I do not always look at these particular news sources, just saying that. <laughs> you can make whatever aspersions or cast whatever aspersions you, you, uh, to yourself that you are so inclined to do. But anyway, she'll open Apple News. Um, let's see. Uh, what I do find what I do find annoying about Siri is using Alexa or the Google Assistant, and you ask it to look up something. Right. Those devices will actually tell you what it found, whereas Siri will tend to say, "This is what I found." Okay, let me come back. Let me come back to that. We'll get there. Um, so, what's the latest news? She does. She does come up there. Is a case in point, probably. But yeah, okay. We, there's another way to to get around that. But for a moment. One of the things that's really interesting is you can say, start a timer, and that works 100% of the time. If you say, start the stopwatch, it doesn't. So start a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, counting down. Start the stopwatch. She opens it. Actually, she didn't even open it this time. She opened the alarm. Usually she'll open the stopwatch, but she doesn't start it. So don't know why. So that's one that doesn't work that well. Um, make a note. If you want to make a note, um, what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a demo on that because you've probably done that a million times. Most people have. So I'll just come back on that. Okay. The timer, of course, shows on the front of your, and I am going to cancel that rather than have it ding. All right. Now, um, information. Now, here's this is will speak to your point, Kenji, to some degree anyway. What's the population of California? In 2020, the population of California was 39,538,223. Okay, so there she spoke it. Um, who's the congressional rep for the state of Rhode Island? Here's an answer from Genie.com. David Nicholas Cicilline Slinney, born July 15, 1961, is an American politician who has been a U.S. representative for Rhode Island's first congressional district since 2011. So again, she spoke it. Now, who is my congressional rep? Who is my congressional representative? I found this on the web. There you get that answer. Now, exactly why it goes one way or the other, I don't know. But sometimes she will tell you, and sometimes she doesn't. Now, that kind of question might be more complicated because she's going to have to know where I live and what congressional district I'm in, right? Um, let's try Let's one more. Um, who's the congressional representative for San Francisco, California? Here's what I found. Now, there you would have thought she would have said it, right? But for some reason, no. So I don't know what that difference is. Um, show me a picture of a Basset Hound. Here are some images of Basset Hound from the web. They are cute. <laughs> so anyway, all right. Um, show me a picture of Burma Shave ads. Here are some images of Burma Shave ads from the web. That's for some of us who are old enough to remember that. <laughs> um, now, I see that that was a Bing search, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think is... is oh, I believe that's Siri? settable in the system settings. That may be settable in the system settings, at, but I think the default for Siri is Bing. Sounds right. And But the default, if you do it just on your phone, the default is Google. So don't ask me why it goes one way or the other. And I don't know if you if you switched, maybe if you switched the default, you'd get more verbal. 
just as a possibility? I don't know. It would be. Let's let's go back for a second. Um, I wonder if the spoken answers are coming from Bing. Well, I was just. That's what I was just going to try. Let's go back for a second. Uh, I want to see if it says Bing or who it says. Who is my congressional rep? Here's what I found. It just says. Oh, and this says show. Wait, show Google results. Google would like to use your current. He's got to use my current location, right, to know who my uh, who my rep is, and yet get still get find my represent my representative. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference is there. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. It's a little bit off Siri per se, but it's something else I found as I was playing around with this. All right, this is a picture. Obviously, it has. Oh, let's because I've already done this. Um, if you have a picture, let me find another one. Let's go with this one. If you have a picture, now it's not going to work for me now that I'm trying to demo it, but some pictures will have down by the little eye down at the bottom will have a little sparkle. And then if you press that little sparkle, it'll come up and tell you it will identify the plant. Now, for some reason, it was doing that earlier and it's not doing it now. I don't know why. Oh, here, let me do this one again. Hang on a second. Uh, where is she? We have a kitty cat in here someplace that I can do this with. Huh. This one, let's see if this one will do it now. All right, th see the sparkle down at the bottom? This happens to be a misidentification, but I'll show you anyway. This says, look up plant. See the look up plant, hit the button. Apple trees. That is not an apple tree. <laughs> it's a bush that is out in front of my yard. So it's a misidentification. I think I sent them a note and said, and the poss another possibility is a rose. It's not a rose. Um, the previous one I had was actually an azalea. And previously it did identify it correctly. But a plant, certain kinds of things, if you've got that little sparkle on the picture that you took, you can hit the sparkle and find out what it is. It also, let me try one more thing here. Let's see. Let's go back here, X that out here. Here, whoops, here, there's a sparkle. It tells me it's a cat. I sort of knew that, but okay. On a previous one, it told me it was a calico cat. Cal there it is. Whoops, calico cat. A calico cat is a domestic cat of any breed with a tricolor coat. The calico cat is most common, et cetera, et cetera. Most commonly thought of as being 25% to 75% white with large orange and black patches. However, they may have some other colors from their pair in their patterns. So there you go. If you guys don't know about calico cats, I don't know if it says it there or not, but they are also almost always female. So that's for your <laughs> useless information file. Um, okay, now, remember where I parked my car? I'm going to tell you about this because I can't very well drive my car around for, as part of the demo. If you do not have CarPlay or Bluetooth, and right now I do not on my car because it's gotten old, um, you can simply say, get, get, get in the car when you park it, or when you're just getting out, hold down the button and say, save my parking location. Then when you walk and go do whatever you, you know, you're shopping at the mall and you shop all day and you don't remember and you, but you have a vague notion, but only a vague notion, then go to the phone again, hold down your little button or say, Hey, what's it? Who's it? If you want, where am I parked? And then when you're done, when you find your car, you want to delete your parking location. So that's, you know, multi-stepped, but it will work with the car. You know, if you're parking someplace, if you're in um, uh, the parking garage at SFO is one place where I have lost my car before, or if I'm just really busy. I mean, if I'm going to Trader Joe's or someplace I normally go, I know where I usually park. But if perchance I'm someplace odd, that this would be useful. Um, how, did, how does it tell you where your car is? It shows you on a map. And I think, well, in my case, I also have an AirTag in my car. 
So I could make it ding. I'm not sure how well the sound would go. If the sound would be, if I was close enough, I might be able to hear it. Uh, but it will show it, show it to you on the map. And tell you how close it is. And tell you how close it is. Does it do a good job remembering your location within a parking structure? I would think the GPS would be blocked and it would have, it would be blind in there. Ch Charles is making a like, whoops, let me get this in my, in the here. Charles is going like this. Maybe, maybe not. It would be worth a try. Now, if you've got a newer car and you have CarPlay, I think it does a much better job all the way around. So ideally, you know, we would all be rich and we'd all have new cars, but um yeah, I'm not there yet at this point. Does it work to say, remember this location as you're, say, walking around or whatever? Can you just, like, drop waypoints? You could. Yeah, you could. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the way I would do it is say, uh, save my parking location. Or save, you, I guess you could just say, save this location. I have not tried that, Kenji, so I don't know for sure. Um, it's where It would be worth playing with. Yeah, so somebody can, you guys play with that and come back and tell me in case. Um, so with air tags, okay, uh, I, like I said, I have a tag, it's named Linda's car. So like I had the tag with the keys. Um, with uh, what, the other note that I have is, is that with CarPlay, you can simply say, find my car and that works or it's supposed to anyway. Okay, now here's the biggest bugaboo for me. Um, Apple Music. If you know the name and an artist of the song, you're in pretty good shape. Um, let me see if I can think of the name of the one that I was going to use. Eh, I've lost it for the moment. I'll, I'll come back. Let's, let's just do um, Play Runaway by Del Shannon. Oh, I'm going to have to. Um, yeah, no matter. We have a title. We Yeah, we have the title. We've got a sound issue because of the way we have the phone set up. Although we could. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Here we go. Yep. Yep. There we go. Where is no, my. No, no, I was going to use this one. If I can. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't want to hear this, but anyway, old rock and roll songs, um, what we find often, neither Charles nor I are particular hip hop nor rap fans, and we will ask for a song where we know the title and we will get a rendition, something that is nowhere near the song that we have in mind. Let's just put it that way. Um, so it works best when you know the song and the title. Um, I have to think of the name of the, let's see. And it'll come back or it won't. Okay. But you can do um, by mood or activity, play some workout songs, play, uh, play my chill list, um, et cetera. Um, it also, in many of these cases, will show you the lyrics on Apple Music. You guys may or may not know this already. Um, it also works quite well. And I, I, my musical tastes are um, idiosyncratic, to put it mildly. Um, but if you say, what song is this? It will identify it with Shazam. So, and one of the neat things that I found out, let's just go back here. Let's get out of here. Whoops. Let's try this again. Shazam. What Shazam will do is it will hold your history for a long, long time. So if I want to know what I Shazammed, there's a whole long list. See all. And I've got 270 songs on here. Shazam so, will also, if you if you have it set up to do it, will also sync to a playlist in Apple Music. Right. You have a playlist on my Shazam you have all your things. You can do that, but you can also, I have, um, what I have done frequently, let me go back here. Let me see something that I would do this with. 
uh, let's do a Larkin Poe song. This one. All right, there's the song and I can just go, just add to. And I would, I tend to go to this one. And it added to my list. Okay, so Larkin Poe is a really good artist for Linda's tastes. <laughs> um, it's two women, they are just dynamite and they are like remote cousins of Edgar Allan Poe, which is where the Poe comes from. So a tidbit you didn't expect, little blues. I'm, I'm a blues fan. So oh, there's that. Um, made a note. Made a note. <laughs> <laughs> because I've never heard of them. I, I'm sorry, what? I made a note because I've never heard of them. You never heard? Yeah, they're 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 probably pretty obscure, but I think they're great. But they're bluesy. They're, you know, but they're, some what's of What's your favorite album? Oh, I don't know what album of theirs. I don't know. There, I don't. We have not. We we've seen them in person. We have. Charles is going to go find out. Well, I have but Apple Music, we, so I would definitely check this out afterwards. Okay. Yeah. They're, I'm they're trying I, Apple Music. If you're into blues, months, you and I should talk offline. Free, free with, intro I, deal. What? I'm I'm trying Apple Music on like free three month deal. Ah. And I probably won't continue subscribing after the three months. But, right. Um, but you can get yeah whatever you subscribe to, you can always. Yeah. So, okay. Now, um, another thing that I learned about this, and I knew some parts of it, but here's more. Um, using Siri with apps. Okay. So, uh, where everybody, so let me go here. Let's go to mail. Mail or notes. Let's go to notes and go back and let's go to, um, let's go here. I've got a penned note here. It says valve cover and gaskets are leaking, but not dripping, okay? So I can go here. Remind me about this tomorrow at noon. Okay, I added it. So from many Apple apps, and that includes Apple News, Books, Notes, Safari, and Photos. You can say, remind me about this. So if you get an email and it says um, the authorities, uh, and I shouldn't go with the, let's see, let's see um, something that you care about. Uh, my, con my congressional rep is having a uh, town hall a week from now, but I'm right in the middle. I'm just getting ready to go out the door to, uh, to go to my dentist. All right. I don't have time to fool with it. Remind me of this this email at 10 o'clock tomorrow at four o'clock this afternoon, whatever it is. And it will pop up a reminder and you'll go, oh yeah, I wanted to get back to that because I wanted to register for that meeting or for that, you know, whatever the thing is. So that's kind of cool. That's a little bit more complex than I think a lot of us know about. Um, so that's that. Now going even further, non-Apple apps. So if I say, Play 538 podcast. There's now like a smooshing together of partisanship and... Let's pause that. Now, what's interesting about this is it's not on Apple Podcasts. It's on Overcast because I don't use the Apple Podcast app. And it has done that. Why it didn't do it with NPR News, I may have said it slightly differently without you know being conscious of it but it goes to my podcast app that I play all the time. It did not go to Apple Podcast. It didn't say, I don't know who you are, what you're asking for. It goes to the podcast in another app. That surprised me. Now, I also use things. How does it know to do that? Did you have to set up a preference? I didn't set up anything. I didn't know that. I mean, it, I was just fooling around. And by the way, you may have also noticed that there's a different voice on here than the normal voice that most people use. You can set that in your system prefs, system pref Siri. And I tend to, rather than going digging, I tend to just use search Siri. There's Siri, type to Siri. Here's your settings. Uh, always listen for, eh, always listen for Hey For. Now, someplace in here, there are the voices. You can do type to Siri in some place. For some reason, I don't see it now. Again, it's the curse of the demos. But in here, let's try this. This is type of Siri. Let's try 
All right, go back. I don't want accessibility. Maybe that's what I did. Siri and search, here you go. Get the right one. Then. Siri voice. Siri voice. There you go. I have, you could do Australian or British or, you know, suit yourself Irish. The British female is definitely my voice of choice. No Scottish. Okay. Yeah, voice, see this, uh, for American, there's five voices. So you can play around with those if you want something different. I've heard this for the demo. I just decided I was going to swap that out. Now, one more. Um, add an item to my things list. What do you want to be reminded about? I want to set up a dental appointment for two weeks from now. Okay, I added it. Now see, she's got, she, he has things up there. Add an item to my things list. I don't have to, I didn't have to do any setup of that. What I found, and if I can go, let's see. Okay, let me stop there for a second. How are we doing on time? We're okay. Um, let me see if I can do, I want to show you guys something. I'm going to swap out um, what I'm sharing here. So we're gonna go stop share there and let's find Safari. Okay, excellent. So this is things, which is obviously a third party app. It happens to be what I use as my to-do list and my organizing, uh, try to organize my life. And there's a whole, on their website, there's a whole thing, speaking to Siri, learn how to speak to Siri and create uh, and view to-dos. And it tells you the language that you knew, that you need, show lists, have Siri read things back to you, a few tips about the exact language, and then they go into shortcuts as well. And then they go, they had a little, have a little bit more on here as well. But what's cool about that, and now let's go back. Let's see here, I'm gonna stop that share. What's cool about that is, is that they, um, they give you that much information. And, for any particular app that you use on a daily basis, it's worth finding out, you know, play with it first. Find, ask Siri. Uh, Siri, you set something up in whatever app you use and see what happens. If it doesn't work, go to the, the documentation for your particular, um, you know, for your particular app, for that particular vendor and see what they have. They may have a lot more than what, what you would think. Um, you're, obviously your mileage may vary, but I was delighted to find that there was that much. I knew there was a little bit, but I didn't realize it was that much that I could do with things. And since I use that all day long, um, it's very useful. A um, couple more things. Just, just um, if you decide that what you want to do is add a few more items, use Siri a little bit more than you do. Um, I would suggest peruse the whole list of things that you can do or just, you know, make whatever notes now, now that you're thinking about it and say, okay, I want to make a note to use this more often and choose one or two items. And then that, you know, what would be most useful, what would appeal most to you? And then use that tip every day for like three or four days. And then look again at the list and see if there's something else you want to add. So, um, and then repeat, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a, there's a lot of resources out there. I have, um, there's, there's a number of Apple pages on Siri that I have links to. And then there's also Siri uh, with apps. Uh, oh, there's, a, there's this app, this one page. Website. I'm saying it's a website. It's not an app. Thank you, Charles. Uh, let's see if I can do that one. There you go. Okay. You guys are seeing Siri user guide, I hope. I don't know who publishes this website. I have no idea, but it has a ton of information. You know, and the stuff on here that I obviously didn't touch. How to use Siri on a, home, on a HomePod. How to ask Siri to display activity from the health app. How to use Siri shortcuts. Now I did not delve into shortcuts, partially because every time I try, I end up shaking my head and walking away. Um, but other people may have better luck. Um, how to set alarms that play music on the HomePod, how to build a workout timer with music, how to use Siri to send, check, and respond to emails, etc. So there's a ton of stuff out here that you can do. And this you can do now. 
I mean, it's not going to write a college essay for you, like chat GPT evidently will. Um, but there's a lot in this that we can use every day to just make life a little easier. Um, so there you have it. Questions. So Question. I'm, a big, I'm a big podcast listener. And I find that Siri is great for controlling overcast. Um, um, louder, softer, quieter. It, you can, it's not particular about the words you use to describe that, I find. Um, stop, pause, continue. Um, go back 30 seconds, go back a minute and a half. Um, it understands all that stuff. It's, you don't need very specific language to do it. Uh -huh. And it's fantastic. Go forward, go forward 70 seconds. Skip the, um, skip the commercials. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, yeah, it's why well, I, I totally wish it would um, skip the commercial, skip through the break would work. Right. I, I, but for I have instance, a, I have... listening to um, 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 The Daily from The New York Times, there's always a break in the middle that's usually 70 or 80 seconds. So. Right. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, I don't know if you want to get into that now, but I'm totally curious to learn more about how you use reminders versus things. Uh, but that's probably outside the scope of what we're doing right here, right? You said that you use things for organizational, but you use reminders for most things. Well, it's probably the other way around. Um, I, I, my problem is, is that I'm not quite sure. It, I, I'm not quite sure how to articulate it. If it's so, something that has to be done today, and it has, and I, and preferably at a certain time, it's like, oh, I really wanted to remember to to water a plant, uh, you know, a particular plant. Then I'm inclined to use reminders. Um, if it's something like a book that I want to remember at some point in time. Uh, hey, husband, I want to remind Charles to buy me certain a certain book because most of our audible audio books go through him. So that I would put in things. So it's probably more time based. And my shopping lists for groceries go in in reminders. So yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of the breakdown. So, um, and if it's something I'm doing every day, usually that goes in things. You know, it's like, okay, I've got this routine. I want to meditate every day or I want to do a yoga pose every day or whatever. Um, that would go in things and then I mark it off. Um, but that's, I mean, ev everybody's going to have a different, we we really should get somebody to, you know, go through uh, either things or perhaps Omni Outliner, although uh, not Omni Outliner, Omni Focus is the one that a lot of people use for organization. I personally find it way more complex if I was still working, but as a retired person, I that's more than I need. So other people, questions. Does, oh, somebody says, does Overcast have a Mac version? Jerry, I don't I, think so. I, I, think I just looked and um, it doesn't, but yeah. if you have an, but you have a um, Apple Silicon Mac, you can run a, um, an iOS version on your on your Mac, right? Good point. You should be able to do that. Yeah, I don't know how you would do that. Charles is going to go look something up and see what we can find. Let's see. Okay, who? What other questions? Anything else? If I set a reminder to remind me to do something at a particular time or day, does it disappear after that time? Um, how does that work? I should know that. In other words, do I have to clean up reminders that I put in, or do they go away automatically after a particular time? Or what is it that we do, Charles? I've done I do this so automatically. I think it goes off when it goes away when you check it. So you did okay. so so actually, let me show you that. I can go back to the phone and show that. Um, do, 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 do I want this one? I need to share my screen. I love Siri for CarPlay, by the way. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> I don't have CarPlay and I, <laughs> I'm jealous. Um, let's go back to Zoom. Okay, so here's, um, now this is Asian market. So actually, let me go back. Let's go back here and go to all. Uh, that's not what I want either. Let's just go here. All right, Jess and Jane clothing. I, these are just things that have been on here forever. 
what I would do with this if I had already bought myself some Jess and Jane clothing, which is a brand, I just check it and then it will disappear. You can get those back if you want. You can also shake to undo. Let's undo that so I don't do that. Whoops. I, I'm just thinking okay. most reminders would be something that you would do and then it you wouldn't need it again. Right. That's true for most people. I'm a for pack most, rat. For most <laughs> <laughs> so, so I sometimes will keep stuff on here for a long time. I sometimes will use it in a way that it's not designed to do. So don't take what I do as any correct thing. I have one list on here that was um, a couple. Actually, I've got a couple lists. This um, I've got a list of exercises that I will leave on here. I probably should have them in notes or some other app, but they're particular exercises I like to do over and over again, and I don't check them off. So I have some like that. I also have a, a shared list uh, shared with Charles and Linda. As you can see there, you can share a list with you and a spouse or a roommate or whomever, and whoever gets to the store first, you know, put bread on the list and whoever gets to the store first clicks off the bread. And then, um, you know, then, then oh, you know cool. not to pick it up because it's gone. I mean, I have a thing on makeup. Who knows what that is? You wouldn't want reminders to disappear when due because you'd probably miss them. You, they, when they're due, they move from future to to do when they're when the it's the appropriate time right yeah, yeah. They, want they, it to remain just, until you're until you've you you it know it knows you're done with it yeah and if necessary there's you'll notice there is a completed section showing up yeah uh, down here. here yeah here let me go to completed so completed there's a whole bunch of things that you know what happens there's eggs i bought eggs at trader joe's today there you go and <laughs> almond milk and a red onion yeah so aren't you glad to know that so that's th th those i click off because you know before i go the next time i go on my regular trip i'll check in the fridge do i need more eggs do i need more milk what do i need um and put it on the list and then as i get go through the store and pick up the items i click them off but then I, if i want to go what the devil did i buy last week i can go to the completed you know, I ought to be able to open the refrigerator door and see it, but you know, <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, a tip on Syria, by the way, is yeah. that everything that was shown here has been on the phone. This will work on virtually every Mac Apple product out there. Um, phones, pads, laptops. Right. Um, the home pods, most of that is accessible on the home pad if you just simply like press and hold the top of the home pod. Obviously, it has no the HomePod has no screen, so a lot of those visual elements they'll just say you'll have to open that on your iPhone instead. Right, right. We we hear that often at our house. But almost everything that you see here should translate to any of the other devices. Is there anything anybody wants me to ask it? Uh, now I need to have the screen back again if I to, well, to see we, chat. I know I know so is ours and Bev have their hands up. Okay. Yeah, I see Bev. All right, let me see if I can. Um, I, uh, what do I do? Hit chat? Uh, just go ahead, Bev. Go, yeah, Bev, tell me what you're looking for. Well, I was wondering why you used Overcast instead of the Apple Podcast app. I've been using it a long time. When the Apple Podcast app came out, it was not nearly as good. And I use a ton of podcasts. And so I've been using it a long time. I just think it's an excellent app. Um, I don't know if Apple has the same features that Overcast does. So the over, the where Overcast do you get the app, podcasts from? The same, the same place. Yeah, same place. You just, you just, oh, you, all right, hang on. I'll show you that. Uh, go back here, Overcast. If I want any particular podcast, uh, go to- uh, Get the plus at the top. The, uh, yeah, there we go. Plus at the top. Uh, what's the name of a podcast that you listen to? Pick oh, a podcast. You're asking, somebody. You're asking mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Any, well, you or anybody who's who's got a podcast. Helen Highwater. Helen Highwater? Yeah, Heilman. And Highwater? Eh? Yeah, and that's me. Ampersand? Ampersand? And, or? And no, well, probably, but it's A and D. Okay. Okay. A N D, Helen gone, high water, and, huh? H and probably you have enough right there if you just scroll down. Okay. There it is. There it is. Okay. So it's you just 
and then hit the button and it it just works yeah. It, it start. You can subscribe to it, or you can just get the latest episode, or you can go through episodes and pick one, or whatever. And if you have a restricted piece that's uh, like a, a subscription or paid item, you can enter the URL directly in and get a direct feed. Yeah, I have one. I'm at least one that I pay for. <clears throat> so yeah. So uh, if you want to what? turn off the sharing on that a second. Tur uh, what turn do you mean? Your screen sharing. Oh, you want me to get out of here? All right. Hang on a second. Charles wants me to get out of here. Let me remember how to do this. He says, stop share. Yeah. Okay. Um, you were asking about it. Yes, you can run Overcast on your Mac if it's an Apple Silicon Mac. And it's designed for it, too. So podcast so, so on your app. On your Overcast Android. has a version that will run on my Mac. Uh, if you have an if you have an Apple Silicon Mac, I, what kind I, of I do, I do. I had no you got idea. It. You it got the it. Same app as your iPad uses. So there you go. If your M1 your your Apple Silicon Mac can run any um or I think most iOS or iPad apps, right? If that app allows it. Okay. Uh, because they do have to actually turn that on. And usually that means those developers have taken the time um, to input like Mac OS interface sort of controls to the thing rather than just leaving you with an iPad. Did, did I have a, there was another hand up besides Bev's, wasn't there? Or oh, that wrong? was Marty. Marty. Was it? Oh, oh I guess you got. Yeah, we, we, neither one of us have found using reminders very effective. However, oh. what I want to share is that when I'm driving, for example, right? And my and I want to, I want to do so. I want to remember something, right? I learned that if I say Siri, schedule uh, at uh, Monday at three p.m. I just pick that out of the air, and then I read what I want Siri to put down. It will be on my calendar. If yeah. I if I forget that. And I say something like, uh, Siri, make a note on uh, next Monday. She'll come back and say, I'm sorry, I'm not authorized to make a note. So I have to remember to say schedule, da 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 da, -da. And it's very effective when I'm driving because that, that's the one place that I can't do anything else. Interesting. Do you have CarPlay in your car? No. Okay, yeah, neither do I. Can you describe what you do again? Can you say it again? Yeah, so I say, hey, Siri, Schedule, I pick out a time. Schedule tomorrow at 4 p.m. and uh, 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 go to the store. And it does. It puts it on your on your calendar. It'll put it on my calendar. And I can put three things on my calendar. It, it very often will ask me to confirm it. That's the one issue I don't like. Sometimes I have to poke the watch. And, and that's a little hard when you're driving. But anyway, I just wanted to share that because it really does work. Oh. Well, why, why wouldn't you just use a reminder? Wouldn't that do the same thing? Maybe, except that we really don't have experience. We just never used reminders, and it probably would. I, 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 well, I, don't I, know I haven't it. either. I'm going to start. <laughs> Does a reminder pop up on your iPhone? Yes. Yeah, it pops up on the screen. I got Actually, a question. Let, let's, well, should I show that? Should <laughs> uh, I go back? I got a I got a quick question. You say Apple Silicon. You're talking about the M1 and the M2 chips? Yes. yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And I saw um, Jerry had his hand up too for a minute. Did you have a question, Jerry? Yes, I do. Will Overcast uh, play uh, video podcasts or just audio? Do we know the answer? I don't, everything I'm kind of I a do snob is. snob on podcasts. I like, I like to see a video. I've tried that and I can't get video to play on Overcast. So you're using Apple, you're using the Apple podcast. Uh, uh, yes, I use both. If it's something I want to watch on video, I'll use Apple podcasts and all of the audio ones. I use Overcast because I have more control. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you very much. When you say more control, can you explain that a little more? Because I sure. Yeah. If it's a show I'm familiar with and I know they have 30 to 60 seconds of talk at the beginning or maybe they're talking about their um, 
anyway, you can just say automatically start 30 seconds later. So you can cut out the intro and the outro. Intro. Yeah. And um, I forget what the other thing. Oh, I put them into playlists. So yeah. if I want to listen to a cooking show, then I can just have a cooking playlist. Yeah. That's yeah. It's mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of things. You, I, I do have the paid version on Overcast, and you can adjust the amount of time that you skip forward and skip back. And I've oh. got you know I, the podcast that I listen to most often. It's like I know exactly how long their commercials are, and I go ding 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 three you know three times for some of them, and I'll go twice for another. And then I have a back button to go backwards seven seconds. And on mine, I can hit it almost exactly so that I don't hear any commercials. So actually, that's... actually the paid version and the yeah. free version of Overcast have the exact same functionality. The oh, only they? difference is that the free version, you get little um, banners at the bottom promoting other podcasts. Okay. And I actually, I subscribed for a couple of years. And then it lapsed, and I actually like the free version better because I like those banners because yeah. they're not intrusive at all, and they and I'm always interested in a new podcast and um, and yeah. it's just, it's you know you just have this little yeah you know, quiet banner at the bottom it doesn't flash or scroll or or anything and yeah. sometimes I go oh what's that one and you click it and you know and it takes I'm in trouble I'm in trouble if I do that. I'm going, to, I'm going to do nothing all day, but 24 hours a day, but listen to podcasts. So, okay. We should, we should probably sign off uh, or, or at least move on to move off of me and, and have for people have technical questions about anything. Does somebody have another question? I thought I saw an, there was somebody else who wanted. Was there another one? I do. I just wanted to make a quick comment uh, for the feature where you're in the pictures and you uh, actually see the little sparkly eye right i noticed a couple of things first the sparkly eye may not show up right away you might have to stay on that picture for a moment okay size whether there's something on that picture it can identify but it does more than flowers it does birds it does animals mm -hmm. it does um plants landmarks trees. it'll do landmarks yeah so there's a lot that that'll yeah. do it's fascinating going through my old pictures and seeing things identified that i never knew the name of yeah so yeah yeah cool. yeah i thought the example of the cat might have gotten that through but i probably should have said it explicitly thanks dan sure it's yeah. really good. thanks someone asked about what happens when your reminder time arrives i just tested it and i actually get a pop-up across my screen and my phone buzzes so it tells you you have a reminder that you need to take care of, huh? Yeah. Oh, you great. Could, yeah, and whatever whatever the wording was appears on my screen, like remind me to bake the potato or whatever. Yeah. It also, um, you can, it will give you some options. It'll say delay for 10 minutes or delay for, mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact increments, but you can delay it. Remind me tomorrow is one. Mm -hmm. it, you know, uh -huh. if you go, oh, I'm not going to get to that today. You can hit a button and then remind me tomorrow and it'll pop up tomorrow. So well, I don't have to reset it. You don't have to. You just, well, you just, when well, it pops just, up, yeah, it exactly. offers you that option. But I don't have to go through the whole thing. I want to do this and that. Remind me to do this and this and this. You just, Correct. You, you just, just say, it, I want to, you know, cancel till tomorrow. Post yeah, try, try, try one tonight or, you know, after we, after we're done or, you know, when things are quiet and just say, remind me to learn more about reminders. And in, in, if you say, remind me to uh, learn more about reminders in an hour, and then it'll pop up an hour from now. And then, you, then you'll see the options of uh, mm -hmm. remind me tomorrow, remind me in an hour, whatever the options are. I can't remember what all of them are. So. Thank you. Yeah, do it, try, try a sample. Okay, let me get out of here. Robert.